The Battle of Kimolpo Bay was an early naval battle in the Russo-Japanese War, which took place on 9 February 1904, off the coast of present-day Intern, Korea. Background the opening stage of the Russo-Japanese War began with a preemptive strike by the Imperial Japanese Navy against the Russian Pacific Fleet spread among Port Arthur, Vladivostok, and Kimolpo Bay. Command of the Kimolpo operation was given to Rear Admiral Uso Tokichi, with six cruisers, three to eight torpedo boats, the Aviso Chihaya, three transports and 2,500 ground troops. Kimolpo also had strategic significance, as it was the main port for the Korean capital of Seoul, and was also the main invasion route used previously by Japanese forces in the First Sino-Japanese War of 1894. However, Kimolpo, with its wide tidal bore, extensive mudflats, and narrow, winding channels, posed a number of tactical challenges for both attackers and defenders. The Japanese protected cruiser Chiyoda had been based at Kimolpo for the past 10 months, and had been keeping watch on the Russian protected cruiser Vyag and the aging gunboat Koryets, also based at Kimolpo to look after Russian interests. After the Russian transport Sungari arrived at Kimolpo on 7 February 1904, reporting the sighting of a large Japanese force approaching. The gunboat Koryets was ordered to Port Arthur to report and request instructions. In the early morning of 8 February, Koryets spotted Chiyoda outside the Kimolpo roadstead, and mistaking it for a fellow Russian ship, loaded its guns for a salute. On closing in, the crew of Koryets realized them mistaken in the ensuing confusion the guns were discharged. Chiyoda responded by launching a torpedo. Both sides missed, but this was the first actual exchange of fire in the Russo-Japanese War, and it is highly unclear which side actually opened fire first. Koryets retreated back to Kimolpo Harbor. Later in the morning of 8 February 1904, Chiyoda rendezvoused with a used squadron outside the entrance to Kimolpo, and reported that several warships from neutral countries were present in the anchorage, including HMS Talbot, Pascal, and Elba. An American warship, the gunboat US Vicksburg, was also present, but she was further up the harbor. Uh, you reasoned that if the Russians remained anchored in the midst of the neutral neutral ships, they could not attack his transports, whereas if the Russians came out to do battle, he had ample force to deal with them. On the other hand, it was against international law to attack the Russians while they were anchored in a neutral port. Admiral Uyu sent a message requesting that the captains of HMS Talbot, Pascal and Albert to shift their anchorage promising that no attack should be delivered before 1600. The battle. Admiral Uyu ordered the cruisers Chiyoda, Takachiho, Asama and his torpedo boats to proceed up the channel with the troop ships to commence the debarkation at once, while the cruisers Nanawa, Nataka and Akashi were held in reserve. Three torpedo boats took refuge near Nataka far board. At 1800 on 8 February, Japanese troop ships anchored at Kimolpo, mooring next to the Russians, and disembarked four battalions of soldiers of the IJA 12th Division in an operation that continued into the night. To the amazement of the tense Japanese, the Russians aboard Vyugan Koryets took no action, but continued to air out bunting as if on parade. The troop disembarkation was complete by 300 on 9 February, and all Japanese warships and transports withdrew from the harbor except for the Chiyoda. The latter delivered a letter to Vyagan neutral vessels, including the British cruiser Talbot, the French cruiser Pascal, the Italian cruiser Elba, and the U.S. gunboat Vicksburg and Collier Pompey. His Imperial Japanese Majesty's ship Nanoa Kimolpo Roadstead, February 8, 1904.
Sir, I have the honor to notify you that as hostilities exist between the Empire of Japan and the Empire of Russia at present I shall attack the men of war of the government of Russia, stationed at present in the port of Kimolpo, with the force under my command. In case of the refusal of the Russian senior naval officer present at Kimolpo to my demand to leave the port of Kimolpo before the noon of the 9th of February, 1904, and I respectfully request you to keep away from the scene of action in the port so that no danger from the action would come to the ship under your command. The above-mentioned attack will not take place before 4 o'clock p.m. of the 9th of February, 1904, to give time to put into practice the above-mentioned request. If there are any transports or merchant vessels of your nationality in the port of Kimolpo at present, I request you to communicate to them the above notification. I have the honor to be, sir, your most obedient servant. URIUA conference was quickly convened on Talbot by Captain V. Sevolodrudnev and the captains of neutral warships, and it was decided that the Russians would fight their way out. At noon, Captain Dennis Bally of Talbot came to Nanoa with a letter signed by all of the neutral captains except for the captain of Vicksburg, W.A. Marshall, declining the request to change anchorage on the grounds that Kimolpo was a neutral port, outgunned and outnumbered, and refusing advice from the neutral captains to surrender at 1100 on the 9th of February. Captain V. Sevolod Rudnever Vyag attempted to make her break for the open sea. From the Vyag logbook, 11.10 All hands on deck on Vyag. 11.20 Cruiser goes to open sea, Coriettes in one cable length behind. English and Italian crews cheer Russians. On the Italian cruiser Elba the Russian anthem is played. 11.25 Battle alarm on Vyag. Japanese cruisers Asama, Nanawa, Takachiho, Chiyoda, Akashi and Nataka in bearing line from Ritchie Island to Northern Passage. Japanese torpedo boats behind cruisers. 11.45 Vyag opens fire with port guns. 11.47 Asama opens fire with 8-inch gun. All Japanese squadron then open fire. One of the first Japanese shells that hit cruiser destroyed the port wing of front bridge, set fire in chart house and broke the four shrouds. Junior navigating officer midshipman Count Alexei Nirod was killed. All personnel on range finding station number one were killed or wounded. Damage 10.2, gun number 3, all personnel killed or wounded, battery commander midshipman Gubonen was wounded but refused to go away until he fall. Fire on bow and quarterdeck, with the same shell, that caused fire was damaged guns. 10.2, number 8 and number 9, 75mm, number 21, 47mm, number 27 and number 28. With other hits was nearly destroyed main battle top, destroyed range finding station number 2, damaged guns number 31 and number 32, fire in lockers on accommodation deck. 1205 after passing traverse of Yodolmi Island trunk with rudder drive was damaged. At the same time, Captain Rudnev was shell-shocked in head by fragments of another shell, hitting foremast. Staff, bugler and drummer, who stay astride him was deadly killed. Helmsman Petty Officer Snedarev was badly wounded in back. And orderly of Captain Quartermaster Chibisov was lightly wounded too. Ship from now was steered from steering compartment, but orders were stiffed, so course permanently was corrected with engines. At strong, current cruiser steered badly. 12.15 willing to go out of fire range to repair as possible steering drive and put out fires in different places begin to turn with machines. As cruiser steered badly. Near Yodolmi Island engines on fullback. Cruiser was put in disadvantaged position relatively to island when steering drive was broken with rudder at 15 to 20 degrees on port side. Distance to enemy shortens to 28 to 30 cable length. Fire strengthens. Hits increase. 
Near the same time large caliber shell hit port side underwater, water gushed into huge hole, stoke hold number 3 begins to fill with water, which level raised up to furnaces. Chief Officer and Chief Boson placed patch under the hole, water was pumped all time, its level decreased continuously, but cruiser continued to listing at port side, with shell passing through officer cabins, which were wrecked, deck was pierced and meal in provision berth was inflamed, then cot netting at waist under the sick quarters was pierced, wherein fragments get into sick quarters, cots in netting catch fire, which was put out lively. Serious damage forced us to get out of fire range for a more long time, that is why we come to roadstead at full speed, firing with port and bow guns. Throughout the battle with one shot of 10.2 gun hashtag Jibo bridge of Asama cruiser was destroyed and put a fire, Asama stopped fire for some time. Bow turret on her was apparently damaged, as it not fired up to the end of battle. 1240 with cruiser approached the berth and Japanese fire become dangerous for neutral ships on roadstead. Two cruiser pursuing us stop the fire and return to the rest of squadron out of Yodolmi Island. 1245 distance to the Japanese so increased that our fire become ineffective, so we stop it. Although the Russian logbook records damage to Asama, Japanese records indicate that she took no damage. Unable to break past the Japanese squadron by mid-afternoon, Koryets and the badly battered Viag returned to Kimolpo Harbor at 13.15, where both took refuge near the neutral warships. At 1600, Koryets was scuttled by her crew by blowing up two powder rooms. Fragments of the blown-up ship landed dangerously close to neutral vessels, fearing a greater explosion with potential casualties. The captains of the neutral warships present urged Rudnev not to blow up Vyag in a similar manner. At 1810, scuttled by her crew, Vyag rolled over on her port side and sank. Crewmen from Vyag were dispatched to the Russian transport Sungari, which had remained behind in the harbor during the battle, and set her on fire to prevent her from falling into Japanese hands. Outcome The Battle of Kimolpo was a military victory for the Japanese. Russian casualties on the Vyag were heavy. All of Vyag S-12-6 in guns, all of her 12-pounders, and all of her 3-pounders were out of action. She took five serious hits at all below the waterline. Her upper works and ventilators were riddled, and her crew had put out at least five serious fires. Of her crew with a nominal strength of 580, 33 were killed and 97 wounded. Most serious cases among the Russian wounded were treated at the Red Cross Hospital at Kimolpo. The Russian crews, except for the badly wounded, returned to Russia on neutral warships and were treated as heroes. Although severely damaged, Vyag, not blown up, was later raised by Japanese and incorporated into the Imperial Japanese Navy as the training ship Soya.